What's up guys, Houndesh here, and today we're going to jump in and talk about the upcoming Ruinous Effigy Quest in Destiny 2, because as far as we know this one's pretty likely to drop into the game soon. And mainly in this video, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a heads up on a couple of sections of the quest, with some specific shouts, including efficiently hunting Sabathun's marionettes. And there's a step with a useful tip worth knowing for day one of the quest. We can keep that fairly spoiler free initially, and then we'll run a quick preview of the quest steps, weapons to have at the ready, and a look at the reward of course. So an obvious spoiler alert is necessary, but if you guys want an early look, then we'll have one in this video. So first up from a couple of the trailers, we have seen Ruinous Effigy in action, and we know a few things about its perks and things like that, so we'll touch on them in a few moments. But as a quick heads up, there is going to be a section to kill a bunch of Savathun's marionettes, and you may have noticed these enemies spawning inside of the contact public events. And it's possible that in the process of completing the quest, we'll have to run contact events a few times, but until a couple of days ago, me and my clan were thinking this could take quite a long time. However, it appears that Bungie have us covered already. So each week, contact changes position on Io and Titan. And it appears at the moment that if you go to the area not featured for contact in a given week, you'll get kind of infinitely spawning mini versions of the contact event bosses. And these do spawn back to back. So by taking these out, it's going to be the fastest way to get marionette kills. And so you'll get notifications for Blight spawning nearby, and essentially, weaker versions of the contact bosses are going to spawn in sequence. They come either with marionettes nearby when they spawn, or the marionettes will spawn as those bosses go down. And so instead of having to run the contact event, it would appear that this is going to be quite a bit quicker, because marionettes most reliably spawn alongside the bosses. So in a contact run, you'd have to complete essentially the entire event just to kill a couple of them, whereas by farming in the alternate areas, it looks like we'll be able to do it a lot quicker. So bear in mind that alternate area kind of mini event for Savathun Marionette spawning. And once again, basically of the two locations that the contact event can spawn on Titan and Io, it appears that Marionettes spawn reliably in the off location on a given week. And so bear that one in mind. Also, you get a couple of twisted energy every time you take out one of the bosses in these mini events. And again, those events will be useful for step four of the quest. But now to get into spoiler territory with the rest of the quest steps, nothing especially mind-blowing in the quest itself. But initially, the quest is going to show up at the Prismatic Recaster, so when it drops we go pick that up, and the first step is to complete the mission Interference on Io, and it's possible that the means to an end quest is going to be needed to access Interference as it normally is on a weekly basis, so be prepared for that possibility, but otherwise it'll be a case of completing a version of the Interference mission. Once that's done, we'll get on to step 3 of the quest, and this is where we need to defeat 15 of Savathun's marionettes, once again, most reliably farmed in those mini events we spoke about at the start of the video. Also, seeing as the quest lists Titan as one of the available locations to make progress, we should point out that next week in Destiny cards have confirmed that Titan will have a contact event unlocking next Tuesday, and that correlates with a likely release of this exotic quest. But also, there'll be a requirement to collect 25 calcified light fragments, so the description actually says collect the fragments on Io, Titan, Mars, and Mercury using Ghost's nav mode. And with it needing nav mode to find them, it does appear like these are going to be static collectible items. Although when it comes to the quest step, nav mode should clarify that pretty quickly. And so step 3 will be a combination of getting the marionette kills and collecting the fragments. But then for step 4, it's something we can be pretty ready for from the start. So step 4 basically requires us to complete gambit matches or reckoning runs to score 18 points. And higher tier reckoning completions, as well as defeating guardians in gambit, will grant the most progress. And so on that basis, most likely is that in a good team, tier 3 reckoning is going to be the fastest and most reliable way for everyone in the fire team to get all of the match completions done. Importantly, the step also requires 100 void kills, which can be done very easily in Reckoning, as well as chaining 25 precision multi kills. So, a good setup to bear in mind and something maybe worth equipping, ready for when the quest drops. But you can throw on void weapons, of course, things like Recluse, which is also going to be pretty good for getting precision kills. And then a void heavy machine gun would also be useful, things like Bane of Sorrow, Hammerhead, or Temporal Claws, as they'll also get precision kills much easier. And then various different void subclass builds. With that equipped and running Reckoning, it should be a very reliable place to smash this step of the quest out. But of course, Gambit is there if you prefer, and it's possible that Guardian kills are going to give a really good amount of progress. But it's probably the case that if you're in a fire team trying to get through the quest very quickly, that Reckoning will get everyone through it at about the same pace. However, once this is done, we simply receive an exotic engram that needs to be decrypted at the Prismatic Recaster to gain access to what we are very sure is going to be the ruinous effigy. And so the quest doesn't appear to be super, super complicated. It's not super long either. 
but is at least a little bit more involved than something like Leviathan's Breath, as far as we know. And then, of course, we get access to the weapon and some pretty cool content that drops alongside that. So if you want a preview right here, Ruinous Effigy will come with the bonus Transmutation, and final blows with the weapon collapse victims into Void Transmutation Spheres. And that pairs with the secondary bonus for the weapon, Evolution, where the spheres you create can be picked up and wielded as weapons by you or your allies. And that'll include the ability to do a light or heavy attack, as well as guarding or draining nearby combatants. And we've seen a guardian in one of the trailers create one of these spheres, actually pick it up, and use what I believe is a heavy attack right there to take an enemy out. So definitely a pretty interesting idea. And of course, in the sandbox, we'll see just how potent that one could be. But also, there is going to be the ruinous effigy catalyst, and this is where the Eyes of Savathun scattered across various locations will come into play. So once Ruinous Effigy is acquired, it will have the ability to take out those eyes, which are currently immune to normal weapons. And as far as we know, there is simply a triumph associated with taking all of the eyes out, so there are 50 of them. But also, destroying those eyes with Ruinous Effigy looks like it's going to grant more progress towards upgrading the Catalyst. And so defeating combatants with the weapon or transmutation spheres, or destroying the eyes of Savathun will help to unlock the upgrade. And it requires 1,000 enemies defeated, but presumably the eyes of Savathun will count as a whole series of enemies in one go. And it doesn't appear you have to collect all 50 to actually get the catalyst. It's essentially you either make a very large number of kills or you keep hunting down eyes to reduce the amount of kills that you're going to require. That's kind of how it looks like it's going to work. Hopefully I'll have a video compiled with all of the locations for the Savathun's eyes in the game in time for when Ruinous Effigy is available. But otherwise, for today guys, that's everything that we have to speak about in this video. And so I hope you have found this one useful. Give us any of your thoughts about the quest down below, or indeed the weapon, once we get a hold of it. But if you've enjoyed this one, a rating below really does help me out as well. And also feel free to hit subscribe so I can keep you posted with the world of Destiny 2. But otherwise, for now, thank you as always for tuning in, and I hope you have an awesome day.